Madame. Well, thank you, darling. Thank you, Cindy. I'll tell you, though, I feel like one of them out here today because we are going to be talking about all kinds of things, including, I mean, honestly, I would give Chuck Turner, I said earlier today, a preacher's handshake to get off my payroll. <laughs> Are they really going to toss him tomorrow, or do you think that these threats that he has been making, that he will have people marching on City Hall, it's all a conspiracy, it's the man trying to take him down, do you think this is going to work with the Boston City Council? I, I think the council will show some leadership. Look, I think Mike Ross, uh, he's not the only one. Mike Ross gives the City Council a good name. He really yeah, does. He does. And, you know, the poor guy is in this position where now he's going to count votes and, and, and take this vote. To uh, to eject a council member, it's 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 unpleasant, it's uncomfortable, it's it also is unnecessary. Hey, you've been convicted of a felony, okay? You're a public elected official, you've been convicted of a felony. It's time to step aside, it's time to step down, and not have one final hurrah, go out in the blaze of glory, guns blazing uh, in the uh, theoretical sense only, and and um, and put your fellow council members in this position. It's just it's just impolite, and I think uh, he ought to step aside and do the right thing. Now, Peter, is anyone in the city council going to be able to forget that picture of Chuck Turner fanning out the $100 bills with that gigantic grin on his face? Hey, now! <laughs> Listen, I, I, I have very mixed feelings uh, about... I, I, some people may remember that I actually think uh, Chuck was railroaded by the feds. They have the side. They have the side. Did he just say that? Yes, did. I did. He did. Um, wow. The other side, when you look at the the uh, sort of culture of corruption that the media is portraying, you know, the probation scandals up here, Diane Wilkerson's uh, sentencing is coming up, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the Boston City Council not to vote to eject Chuck. Um, Chuck's one of these guys that thinks the world revolves around him, so he's not going to go quietly. Um, I do have to say, as Cosmo did, that City Councilor Mike Ross uh, handled, has handled this as delicately, I think, as politically as something like this can be handled. He's not trying to grandstand with it, as many council presidents might have in the past. And he's actually concerned about the dignity of the Boston City Council and City Hall, um, is something that's pretty rare up in the city. It is council. nice to see a, a city council president that brings some dignity to the job. But that acts they're, presidential? They're, they're, well, we've had others in the past, but we're, I'm a little worried about our future. You, you can, I believe you can buy into the reasonable doubt here that Peter's, uh, Peter's alluding to in, in, in the Turner case and still believe and still understand that, you know what, as, as, as Council Ross said, it's the system we have. It's the only one we have. You've been convicted he of that felony. He voted for it. He voted down. for that rule. That, so, that changes the game. And, when and, you're and, convicted, you get stepped down. But uh, there are so many and, different and, ways. And, and it's a shame because here here is a guy, um, at worst during his career, uh, very quirky, certainly a likable guy, meaning Chuck Turner, representing an, an important constituency and, and having many important things to say over the years and compounding the uh, uh, the unpleasantness of the, of the conviction is the way he's going on. And, and speaking about unpleasantness, look at the probation scandal. Let's weigh in. I mean, this idea that we have not only the system in place that is rife with corruption, but that means that we have murder rates that are escalating. We have crimes that are being committed across the Commonwealth, and really, these bad guys are not being at all monitored because we have, in a lot of sense, we have very good probation officers, but we also have incompetent hacks that were put in place by politicians, and it's leaving all of us in danger. What do you think should happen? i got to say a couple things. Number one... I would not now with a federal probe, uh, as we as we learn, as we see this morning, um, the U.S. Attorney looking into this. Uh, it's not going away. Number one. Number two. I would not be surprised if a year from now, even though we've just been through an election, you know, the makeup of the legislature looks a little bit different, or maybe even very different. At the end of whatever happens here with this federal investigation, there's going to be some upheaval. I, I really think there is. And lastly, I, I got to say the. Um, the tact that's been taken by leadership in the House and Senate yeah. that, hey, you know what, recommending people for jobs is part of the job, it's business as usual. That's how the that's, job is done, the Senate that, president said. That's not working for That's me. what we it's, do. No, if your argument is, hey, this is how we do things, it's, just, it, it doesn't work. it's not working. Now, you know I like Bobby DeLeo, Peter, but would, were you staggered by what he said yesterday? Hey, we all do it. It's just the way we do it. Um, 
I've had a lot of issues with DeLeo. I personally like him. I think he's a good guy. I think he generally has the, the public's interest at heart. But he's tone deaf, as are so many people up on Beacon Hill. Uh, the people in the legislature just do not seem to understand that taxpayers are fed up with the way government is running. It's not a private employment agency for public officials. It certainly isn't. Now, speaking of public officials, you saw the front page of the Boston Herald today. Is Mitt Romney being overshadowed by the big star, the megastar Sarah Palin? I think it's easy for anyone to be overshadowed by Sarah Palin. She's everywhere. She's got a reality show. She's on... She's on Fox. She's, she's, she writes books. She's this outsized personality. Um, if I can tell you, I like Mitt Romney as as an adult. I, I like I like the you know I like the Mitt Romney sort of grown up figure as opposed to hey I guess I need to start matching her as uh, uh, as a TV star. He, when, you know when he, when he ran for president, he didn't really run as himself. Right. Uh, he went real. He went further right than you would, you would have even imagined that Mitt Romney would or could. Um, I like Mitt Romney for who he was for those two and a half really strong years as governor during his term, and I'd like him to move back in that direction. If he feels, you know, hey, everyone does Leno, that's fine, but uh, I don't want to see this guy turning up on a reality show or all of a sudden being all over the place in, in, the, in the pop culture universe. Now, let's, let's be adults here. Well, you know, Peter, you saw Mitt Romney uh, making a Fox 25 report, and he showed up at an event in New Hampshire in a pickup truck wearing a barn jacket. Is he going to start gutting mackerel? <laughs> on a ship somewhere in Gloucester, is that something that we don't want to see, like the Sarah Palin I don't know, reality maybe show? Maybe he's going to go, you know, fishing for smelts in Maine, and where you bite their heads off or stuff like that. Listen, I, I, I know what Cosmo is saying, but I don't think Romney has ever really presented who he is to the public. Um, he's always been angling for something else, and he's been always looking over the horizon and trying to shape himself. Um, I, there's a, a very strange situation here, and that Palin uh, gets all these headlines, but polls show she cannot be elected president. She could win the nomination, but she most likely can't be elected president. Romney, on the other hand, could be elected president, but he probably can't win the nomination. Um, I wonder if either of these people will be major contenders in four years from now. It's certainly going to be interesting. I'm Michelle McFinn. B, in for BB, who is at home with the baby. Congratulations. We have Peter Katzis, Boston Phoenix, Cosmo Macero, my good friends, O'Neill and Associates. And we will be back with more of the Fox 25 Morning News.